before that to begin with, and then you're like, oh my god, you know, it's so scary. It's fun.
The Lord be with you. Grace and peace to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And on behalf of the session of Hydenwood Presbyterian Church, we welcome you here to this service of worship on this beautiful summer day. We are glad to have each and every one of you with us here today to worship the Lord our God, whether you're sitting in a pew with us here in the sanctuary or watching online. I'd like to extend a special welcome to those of you who are visiting with us today. As a reminder, we do have visitor cards in front of the, in the pews in front of you there if you want to fill that out and turn it in so we can get to know you better and help connect you to the ministries here at Hydenwood Presbyterian Church. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it together. Please join me now in prayer. O oh God of mystery, as we come together this day, free our minds from distraction. Help us to let go of the errors and worries of the past week. Help us to let go of the resentment and anxiety that turns us away from you and against one another. For just a little while, quiet our hearts and minds so that we can be fully present here with you as we worship together. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in reading our call to worship. In Jesus Christ, the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. We are grateful to know this embodied God. In Christ, all things hold together. We celebrate him as head of the church. Let us worship God. Invite you now to rise in body or in spirit and join in singing our opening hymn, hymn number 12. Please be seated. As we all know, sin clings to us and distorts our hearing of God's word. With this in mind, let us confess together our personal and our communal sins to ready ourselves to receive God's truth. Please join me. 
Merciful God, we confess that we have been distracted with many things and have not loved you with our whole heart and strength. We have not paid attention to your word. We have allowed the poor to be neglected and the weak to be oppressed. We have been impatient in worship and insincere in our dealings with others. We have ignored signs of injustice and disregarded warnings of judgment. Forgive us, we pray, and teach us repentance. Free us from our habits of pride and make us steadfast in faith that we may live as those who are reconciled with you. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, with whom we pray. Amen. Friends, receive this forgiveness that's offered to us by Christ. Rejoice in the redemption God provides. This is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I find finding peace on my own to be a challenge. But we're in luck because Christ has offered that peace to us through his forgiveness of our sins and God's redemptive love. So I ask you now to take a moment and spread that peace to your neighbors. Wave to our friends who have joined us online. Say hello to the choir from across the way. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Good morning. You saw what I have, don't you? I might need I might need Tarquin to help me. He's maybe I'll sit next to me. All right, so I'm gonna do you think Tarquin can throw one of these up in the air and then catch it? Go ahead. Maybe not so high the next time. He did awesome. Do you think he can throw two, one in each hand, and catch them? Awesome. But now what do you think? Can he do three? I don't know. I've never seen him do it at home. Oh, one at a time. That works. We know we can do that.
Needless to say, I put him on the spot. <laughs> so our big folks in here would, would know that he can't add this fourth ball at all. Sometimes in life, we feel like we have so many things going on. All our, we, we use the words, the balls are all up in the air. And we can't catch them. And we feel busy and crazy. And we're so busy trying to not let those balls drop that sometimes we miss out on important things. So moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas are going to hear a Bible story today about two lovely ladies, Martha and Mary. And Martha was so busy worrying about all the stuff. Was the house clean? Were the dishes done? Was the food on the table? Did she have enough seats? All of that stuff when Jesus came to visit that she actually got mad and said, Jesus, tell Mary she has to help me. But see, Mary seemed to understand something. She was sitting quietly at Jesus' feet and listening and soaking up the word of God, the peace of God, a time of sacred stillness. Martha had a lot to learn from Mary. Sometimes we have to give up the busyness and the chaos of our days, and remember to sit quietly with God. What do you think? She's sitting very quietly today. I'm impressed. Do you guys think you can pray with me? Dear God, thank you for loving me. Help me to remember you when life gets busy, and to remember to take time to sit quietly with you, because you are all I truly need. Amen. Hey guys, you ready to go back? The Old Testament reading today is from Amos, chapter 8, verses 1 through 12. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings in that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of this land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account? and everyone who lives in it and all of it rise like the Nile and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son and the end of it like a bitter day. Time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. This is the word of the Lord. 
Friends, please join me once again in prayer. Holy God, your word is a lamp to our feet. So open our ears to hear your word. Open our eyes to see your truth. And open our hearts to receive your grace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42 the story of Jesus' visit to the home of Martha and Mary. Listen for the word of the Lord. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at Jesus' feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, Do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things, but few things are needed. Indeed, only one. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. This is is the word of the Lord. The other day I stumbled upon some really good advice, a really powerful bit of wisdom that I'd like to share with you. It's this. There are two kinds of people in this world. Avoid them both. We just love to divide ourselves up into two kinds of people, don't we? Dog people versus cat people, morning people versus night people, coffee people versus tea people, etc., etc. Now, I'm sure you're all well aware that these kinds of binaries are misleading. Sure, we all have our little preferences on certain matters, but most of us live our lives not in easy black and white, but rather in shades of gray. Nevertheless, we just love finding new ways to split ourselves into competing camps. And sometimes this is a really horrible, awful thing, but sometimes it can be a little fun. Case in point, does anyone remember this picture? Can you see that? That is a picture known infamously as The Dress. It took the internet by storm way back in 2015, which feels like 100 years ago. Now, how many of you right now look at that picture and see a dress of white and gold? Raise your hands if you want. All right, how many think it looks like black and blue? Yeah. Okay, if you remember correctly, this was the, the whole thing, right? People saw two different color schemes. You either saw white and gold or black and blue. And you couldn't believe that someone else, even your own spouse or friend, could see a different color scheme than you. By the way, for the record, the dress was revealed to actually be black and blue. The team black and blue wins. 
Now, I bring this all up because our scripture lesson this morning from Luke, the story of Martha and Mary, is sort of like a biblical version of this dress. It's a story that triggers very passionate responses from people, and these responses tend to fall into two distinct camps. You're either Team Mary or Team Martha. But before we pick sides this morning, let's take another look at this infamous story. Luke depicts uh, Jesus taking a break from his travels on the road to enjoy some much-needed hospitality at the home of Martha and Mary. Now, those of you who have been with us over the past few weeks know that Jesus has a lot to say about the importance of hospitality. Just a few weeks ago, he instructed his disciples to hit the road, and he told them that every time they entered a new village or town, the first thing they were supposed to look for was a safe place to stay to look for people who would offer them hospitality. And after they found that, then they could begin their missionary activities. Now, I want you to keep that background in mind because what we're seeing here in the home of Martha and Mary is a perfect example of that kind of hospitality. They have offered Jesus a safe place to stay, a place where he can rest and refresh himself with food, lodgings, Nevertheless, despite their hospitality and their obvious commitment to Jesus, their home is not really a peaceful place. There's tension in the air. The tension is building, boiling over. Luke paints a vivid, Im uh, vivid image of this boiling conflict. He says that Martha was running around all over the place, attending to the various responsibilities that are required when you have guests come over. If you have ever hosted people yourself, I'm sure you can imagine some of the tasks that were consuming her time and energy. As Carrie mentioned, that involves making meals, cleaning up, vacuuming. Well, not vacuuming in the Bible, but you know what I mean. Mary, on the other hand, has plopped herself down at Jesus' feet, and she 